Quick announcement guys, before we do get into the video, the Strive Smart merch is finally live. Link down below in the description box as well as the first pinned comment down below in the comment section. Thank you all if you support and buy a piece of merch, whether it be a t-shirt, hoodie, whatever it may be, just know it directly supports me, directly supports the brand and the channel and I truly appreciate you and let's get right into the video. What is going on everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the dow jones the s p 500 and the nasdaq we're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what i personally did today in the markets as well as some stocks and etfs that i'm personally watching and looking to trade right now in the month of november here in 2019 and as you guys read in the title we're also going to be talking about you guys whether or not i think it has opportunity to get to 23 dollars as well as these calls options that I did end up selling today so if you guys enjoy the video all you have to do is go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me and feel free to join our 100% free of charge discord group chat the strive smart discord group chat and the strive smart Facebook group all of those are linked down below so let's get started off here without wasting any time with the SPX the S&P 500 the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. This ended up closing the day today up $11.36, up 0.37%. And we can see we actually hit another all-time high today at $3,000, 3085 right? Very, very crazy day today. And honestly, it wasn't Actually, it wasn't that crazy of a day, to be honest, guys, because a lot of the movement came from pre-market, right? A lot of the movement came from the gap up we saw pre-market, really from the close that we saw on Friday, which was at around 3066. And from there, we kind of coasted for the entire day at about 3085 to about 3078-ish, which is around a seven-point um, range, right? And this kind of reminds me of the pattern we saw um, um, on Friday, actually, right? And you guys can see it. We gapped up aggressively, and from that gap up, we kind of coasted for the rest of the day. We saw that same thing pretty much today. We got the gap up, and then we coasted for the rest of the day. So overall, that's kind of what the S&P did in a nutshell, right? It gapped up, but coasted from the rest of the day there, but still ended up closing up 11 bucks. So at this point, like I've mentioned in these videos, as we're hitting all-time highs, there's really no resistance levels um, that we can see. Well, at this point, 3085 is a resistance level, but above that, there's really nothing because we're at all-time highs. So we kind of have to look at um, the, the support levels in this case, which if we go back to this, let's say, one-hour chart on the S&P, we can say, okay, 3060 is a level of support that if we start pulling down, we could potentially hold that, right? The next one is this next trend line that you're seeing at around 3050 and the next one's going to be around 3027 and notice how all of these are previous old all-time highs previous all-time highs um, from the past couple of days here so if we pull down which could happen again this RSI is looking a bit overbought here this can definitely um, in my opinion you know, is kind of in need. It's definitely in need for a bit of a pull down. You know, we could be going down to that 3060 and maybe down to this 50 SMA, um, which could put us around 3045 to 3050. So that's kind of what I'm looking at here on the S&P. You know, we're getting more overbought, so we may be coming here to a bit of a pull down. But honestly, guys, in the short term, I do see this continuing to go up um, in terms of the price based on a bunch of different things, right? Optimism surrounding the trade war. We had a partial trade deal a couple of weeks ago. Jobs reports came in good this past Friday. 100, I believe 18,000 or 28,000. I forget off the top of my head. Um, you know, we had good earn earnings from a lot of the large companies. These are some short-term events that are really pumping optimism into the market. So again, in the short term, I see it going up, but maybe tomorrow we see a pull down. But again, over the, you know, the next month, short term, you know, 
I see it going up still. So let's take a look at the Dow Jones very quickly. Up 114 points here at the close, up 0.42%. And we finally, guys, hit an all-time high on the Dow Jones at $27,517.58. So just like the S&P, we don't really have many resistances to look at at this point other than, again, that all-time high. So now what we have to see is if this pulls down, are we going to hold old all-time highs as support levels, which in this case would be around 27400 27350 You know, that's where we could hold, right? That's what I'm looking at if this does end up seeing a bit of a retracement, which again, it could because it's, it's overbought in terms of the RSI, just like the S&P 500 is. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. That's the performance of the Dow today. And we can go on the hourly chart and see even closer how this is really overbought, guys. We're at the overbought po uh, portion of the RSI, right? We did break above, you know, the, uh, the again, that all-time high, the previous all-time high. But we're so, I feel like, uh, extended above this moving average at this point that this chart is screaming for a pullback in my eyes and maybe a retest either here at 27200 or maybe honestly a pull down simply to that old all-time high as a support retest and then a pop from there that's kind of what I'm looking at right now on the Dow going to the Nasdaq here guys up 55 points up 0.68 percent and just like the S&P and the Dow now, this one seems very extended in terms of being above the moving average, but in terms of the RSI, it's not as overbought. So that's kind of uh, an interesting scenario right now for the NQ, um, but I can honestly still see it pulling down and testing that 50 SMA here based on this one hour chart that I'm looking at, putting it at a level of about 81.50, 81.60. You know, that would be a nice healthy pullback before we potentially potentially continue the run up or maybe sell off even more from there if we break that moving average. So going to that longer term chart, four hour chart, we're at all time highs again on the NASDAQ guys, 82.30 here in terms of the futures. They've gapped up above all the previous all time highs. So now all we have to look at are the support levels, which again, 8100 is a level I'm watching. Maybe this 50 SMA at about 80.55. These are some levels that we could pull down to as these markets continue to get overheated. So overall, that's the market update portion of this video, guys. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about these markets? Do you think they're going to continue to go up in the short term? Do you think we're due for a sell-off? Are you a lot in cash right now in terms of your portfolio? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. So what did I personally do today, guys? It was a funny day for me today. One of my swing trades got completely obliterated, that one being McDonald's. I know a lot of you guys know I've been in McDonald's for a couple of days now, actually in the average of about 194, um, that, that rough area. And we got news today that the McDonald's CEO got fired because he had a relationship um, with an employee, right? And what did that do to my swing trade? Well, it threw my swing trade into the trash as my shares were down near Nearly 3.6% when I decided to just cut my losses, right? I decided to take a loss on these McDonald's shares. And the lesson here is I only scaled in with a small amount of my total position. And this is exactly the reason why, guys, because I if I'm only in with 10, 15% of my goal position size, I lose that three, 3.5% on an event out of my control, like the CEO getting fired. I'm not losing as much money as I would have if I put in the total, you know, 100% position size right off the bat. So, you know, I lost 3%, 3.5% from where I got in because I cut losses. But again, it's not the it's not the end of the world because I was only in with a small initial position. And from now, you know, I'm looking to see what McDonald's is going to do. You know, if we end up holding 188, I might re-enter um, depending on what ends up happening. But I didn't want to take that risk overnight of it gapping down tomorrow even further, putting me in a deeper hole of like, you know, if it went to 186 or something, that would be just digging me in a deeper hole, which again, 
again, I'm not about that. I want to cut the losses and just be safe. But if we go back to that three-year, or not back to it, to it in the first place, we can see 188, 187 is an area where this should technically hold, right? And the RSI is getting very oversold. So I do have confidence that it could maybe find support here in the near-term future. But again, I'm looking to just re-enter at this point. Did not want to take that risk of holding it overnight. So another thing I wanted to talk about was um, the call options I sold today. For those of you guys that don't know, I was in call options, UNG, and I decided to just you know lock in those profits due to the massive gap up that we saw in natural gas, right? Natural gas gapped up like 3-4%. UGAS was up like 14-15% today, and UNG was up, again, a lot, right? 4.3%. My options today, I forget off the top of my head, guys. I'll have a screenshot on here for you, but today they were up like 50%. I, again, I, I forget. You'll see it in the screenshot, but the total position return was 160%. So I just figured lock in the profits on this massive gap up. You know, if we get a pull down, maybe I can enter in, um, you know, either on a swing trade with actual shares. Maybe I can buy some more call options um, in UNG. But as of now, I feel comfortable because again, I was in the money. $21 was my strike price. We got to about $22.40 today. So I feel comfortable just locking that in. Let me know down below. What do you guys think about that? Do you think I should have held on to the options uh, for the further upside? Do you think I made the right move of just locking in the profits? I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. And what are your thoughts on just locking in profits when you're trading options? How do you guys go about that? I'd love to know. So let's get into one more thing I did today, which was at V guys, ticker symbol ATVI. I actually ended up getting into this in the morning and I ended up holding it for the majority of the day and I sold off half of my position locking in the profits and I kept half for tomorrow. And let me explain to you guys why I did that. So on the one hour chart here, let's zoom in a bit. You can see it nice and beautifully as I've drawn from this trend line. We can see that there's a hard resistance at about 56 bucks. There's no question about that, right? But there's also a higher low pattern starting right here. So this can go either one of two ways. We get rejected tomorrow, which in that case, I'd sell out of my position, right? If we ended up getting rejected or we could end up breaking out. And if we break out, there's room for this thing to run up to 57, 57, 50 and even higher, which honestly, it, this, this risk reward reward, in my opinion, is very, very, um, um, what's the word? I guess you can say rewarding, right? It favors the, the, the reward side versus the risk, because if we actually zoom out a bit, uh, a bit further here, you guys can see, um, you know, this thing can run up potentially to the $60 range based off of previous prices and based on this channel, if it breaks that $57 resistance, right? We can run up the 62, 63 bucks, which gives, give this, uh, gives this a, profit of about 10% in terms of how much we can potentially make. So let me tell you guys where I got in because that's kind of important. I got in, I believe it was closer to, uh, it was closer to 55 bucks. If I timed it in here, guys, I probably would have sold the entire position, but that, you know, timing the bottom is, is pretty much impossible. It's not impossible. I've done it before. I'm sure a bunch of you guys have done it before as well, but it's more of a, a luck kind of thing, right? But I personally, personally got in, I think it was closer to about 54.85. And again, I held it for the majority of the day, sold off half of my position. I believe it was around like 55.70. So if we look at that level, that's about a 1.5% profit. And again, I'm holding this into tomorrow. Best case scenario, we gap up. I sell out in the 57s right before the earnings report. I think I can potentially do that, right? Worst case, or that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is we end up getting rejected. We sell down here. And the thing is, guys, I've built a buffer now because I'm up on my shares. So even if we sell off here, I could still probably sell out for a minimal profit unless it just tanks into tomorrow. That, in my case, I'd be screwed, right? But let's say it just pushes down maybe to 55. I'd still get out with a minimal profit, which, again, is, is it's the reward, in my opinion, outweighs the risk here, which is why I, uh, I uh, again, 
held these overnight. That's kind of my explanation in terms of that. So let's break down you guys because I know a lot of you guys clicked onto this video because of that. You guys, like I mentioned, UNG Natural Gas, these went crazy today. You guys was up 15% at one point. And if we zoom in to this chart, you guys can see we gapped up above 1830, which was huge. 1830 was that resistance that we talked about in yesterday's video and that I was personally watching as well, that if we broke above that level, we may be gapping up to 20 bucks, and then, as you read in the title, $23, which, if we zoom out a bit, that is the next level that I see you guys going to based on these, honestly, technicals and based on the price action that I'm seeing in natural gas in general, right? And let me show you guys how much we could potentially make here if we do, you know, break into 20s and into the 23s in terms of a percentage basis, because that's what I focus on. You can focus on dollar amount all you want, but the name of the game is percent because that's how you scale your account, whether you have 500 bucks, 10,000, 50,000, it's percent, guys. If you don't learn from a small account how to use percentages to your advantage, that's it. You're done pretty much from the beginning, right? That's why you need to focus on that and not the dollar amount, right? But anyway, side tangents over. Let's take a look at this. Right now, what I'm thinking and why I kind of took my profits is we may be pulling down in terms of my UNG calls. We may be pulling down here 1830, 1840. We can hold that as a support. That could happen. That's kind of the best case scenario in my opinion, right? If that happens, we can get a nice entry when the RSI is down probably to about 50, 60 at a more healthy spot where if we enter there and ride it back up to 20 bucks, that's 10%. And from there, we can see, okay, Okay, if we break this level, we can trim our profits, take the profits completely, and look and see, are we going to hold 20? And from here, are we going to make that leg up to 23 bucks, which just happens to be where we were a couple of weeks ago when natural gas made its previous rally um, in the in the towards the middle of you know September. That's about 10%. So ultimately, guys, I think that is very possible here, especially as we get towards the season where natural gas is in demand, right? And the prices are going up. This is something that I can see happening. In the short term, though, like I said, ideally, I'd love to see a pull down 18 bucks. That is where I would like to get in tomorrow, right? I, I would love to day trade this thing tomorrow, um, you know, if we were to pull down to this spot. But I don't know, guys, because take a look at this. This is looking kind of bullish to me. You know, if we pop from here, I think it's going straight to 2021, we, and we may never even get the pullback. So overall, those are kind of my thoughts on you guys here. Um, everything in general. Let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs very, very quickly that I do have on my phone right here. And um, some of them, again, I talked about Atvi. We already went over that. My thoughts about it. McDonald's as well. You know, this is one that I'm looking to potentially get back into. So no need to get into that. One in particular, though, that saw a nice pull down today is Roku. Pretty aggressive pull down. And we actually talked about this in my video. I think it was yesterday or maybe on Friday. Either way, we talked about it in one of the videos that Roku may pull down and hold that 50 SMA as a support, putting us on top of the level at around um, 138 to 140. And it seems like right now Roku is doing that. But the thing is, guys, they're reporting earnings here, I believe, on the 6th, which is this Wednesday. So this can heavily fluctuate the stock. And I personally, there is no way that I would be buying this before earnings. It's too much of a gamble, especially with how volatile the stock is. But let's say it doesn't really do much in terms of price volatility after earnings. They get a good earnings report. Maybe we can enter in as a swing trade off of that 50 SMA and uh, maybe ride it back up. That's something that's possible because this thing's been on fire. You know, again, if they put a put up a good earnings report, we can be going back to the 160s, 170s in no time. And I would not be surprised if that ended up happening, which is why I'm watching it. So one more stock, two more stocks, actually, one of them being Abby. This is one that 
it's not on the uh, immediate watch list in terms of, you know, it's setting up as a buy tomorrow, but I think it could be setting up over these next couple of days if it finds its way back to 81 to about $81.50 and holds that level as a support. They did well in terms of their earnings a couple of days ago on the 1st of November, right? We saw that massive pop. The stock's been hot in general, right? Uptrend, the good stuff, all the good stuff, right? You know, riding moves moving averages. We have the bullish cross here. All the stuff's lining up, but we're overbought a bit, guys. I'd need to see a pull down. And if we get a pull down, maybe even an aggressive pull down, down to maybe even 78, 79 bucks and hold that 50 SMA, I'm going to be loading up on AbV. That's kind of the goal here. So the last one I want to talk about is 3M, guys. And 3M was doing quite well today, up about 3%, up almost five bucks. And one level I want to talk about is we broke above 173, which is a resistance from back in the middle of September. And I think this one's been doing good because, or well rather, because these trade talks have been going well, right? And there's been optimism surrounding the trade war. And when that happens, industrials, companies that are related, they start to do well. And you can see, you know, they th these companies, 3M was slammed when the trade war was getting hot and over, over the past couple of months as well, right? You guys can see how much this has been getting crushed. And a lot of companies like like that have been right if we look at caterpillar well not right now i mean it's been recovering but before you guys can see how caterpillar has been dropping you know honeywell is another one um that that, that that's been going down a bit here but nonetheless you know 3m i see potential in it um from 173 to about 178 maybe even back up to the mid 180s i think it's possible but the risk is if the trade war gets rocky again this thing might be dumping aggressively so that is it for this video guys if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and don't forget to join the strive smart discord group chat and the strive smart facebook group and pick up any merch from the strivesmartstore.com that just launched today that's linked down below as well as the first pinned comment in the comment section thank you all for watching thanks for the support oh and by the way go check out my m1 finance portfolio i'll have the video right up here go check it out it's been doing very very well you'll definitely find value in that video peace out